I'm about to introduce somebody who is an absolute wizard. This person is literally, she floats. She floats on air. Um, I'm adding a pin to myself. Um, the woman I'm about to introduce you to is not only a uh, world-renowned million-dollar uh, astrologer, but she is a fairy. She's a wizard. She's as weird as they come and as beautiful and big and vivacious and funny and ah, like the biggest permission slip for so many people. Again, I'm, I'm the person who inspires other people. This is one of those people that inspires me. I, I, I want to be like her, but my version when I grow up more. Right? I'm an elder, she's an elder, but her elderhood, the way she's doing it, the way she's presenting it is fucking next level. Everybody, round of applause for the myth, the legend that is Deborah Silverman. Deborah, we see you. You're making me want to cry. And I just have all this makeup on because I'm doing these funny videos. And so I can't cry. I've got masks. I never wear mascara. So don't make me cry. Yes, yes, yes. Deborah, can you tell the people who don't know who you are on here what it is you actually do for a living? Well, you just told them I was a fairy. Now, how am I going to tell them about how do I get? <laughs> okay, let's leave that part out because nobody knows that he has x ray vision. You probably know this about Preston. He has this way of going into your system and being able to read you. And it's a little disturbing because he calls you out on it because he's so fire who I am in real life before I had the little fairy princess outfit is I'm a psychologist and an astrologer of almost 50 years. I'm about to turn 70. You can't tell by looking. So I've had a very long life and I have had periods where I had no money and I was a single mom and I had to count everything. And I kind of liked it after a while, but it wasn't easy. And it left me insecure the whole time. And then by virtue of wizardry to your point, Preston, I never stopped. So first, I want to just echo what you said. You have to pray. I want to start there. You have to ask for help. And it's embarrassing, especially when you don't have the money or you don't have the self-confidence. So rule number one, write it down, what he said. Tell people in your world you need help. Hang around people who are really looking alive and kicking. <laughs> Did that just happen by mistake, the balloons? Um, um, hang around. Just the second thing that Preston said was, I have all the people I'm closest to now have, because I was codependent for many years of my life. I identified with being the helper because I was so needy. So it echoed my neediness was being around needy people. And that went on for so many years. And finally, I called myself out and I realized that my interdependence was more about the people who had my back than the ones that needed my help. Hmm. And the people that had my back were very different than the ones that needed my help. But I didn't know how to distinguish that. So one piece is pray, get comfortable being vulnerable and being able to admit, like I just did, I was codependent. It took me a long time to admit to those parts. If you have a habit or an addiction or you're caught in being lazy or you know there's a party that's susceptible to being negative, say it out loud. I can't tell you how important it is to be real. And that's what Preston's calling forward. My wizardry came over many, many years that I finally took off the mask. Oh. And I was able to admit, like I, I had at one point, you guys ready for this? Because now I am, it's true. Only Preston taught me that I was a millionaire. I didn't even realize it, but I am. But mm -hmm. there was one point in my career that I got so depressed because I was too embarrassed to admit how depressed I was. And the more I kept it a secret and the more I didn't ask for help, the worse it got. And I was using addiction, which was codependency, but I thought it was pot. And I went and did a 12-step program and I found out I wasn't addicted to pot, but I was addicted to all the people that I wanted to need me. That's what really came through the 12-step program. And I got so low that I had to call my best friend who was very wealthy. And I said to her, I can't pay the rent. I didn't know who to tell. And she, luckily, I was so broken that I literally stopped my career of being an astrologer and a therapist because I was that fucked up. But I was too scared to tell anyone. So she gave me some money. I went and found a really good therapist. Pray first, because there's not a lot of good ones. 
you have to really ask, send me someone who's real. Cause a lot of therapists just take your money. I'll be the first one to say it. Cause I am one and pisses me off. Right. So I prayed and prayed and I found this woman and I got in the room and I started the therapy and she was like, la 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 la. And I said, excuse me, I'm going to be bossy right now. I am fucked up and I need to cry and stop talking at me. And she was mm -hmm. like, I want to do talk. I said, no, I'm going to come in here and half the session is going to be me really, really cathartically, emotionally releasing how sad I am. And I got through it and she listened. She was a really, she was an elder. Pay attention to that. Sometimes the older therapists are the ones that say the truth, not the coaches that are just getting trained, not the brand new astrologers who are just learning. It's the older people in the society that will say truth to you. So there's a little piece of helpfulness. Mm. all of them, but some of them. And then after she paid for my, I mean, honestly, she had to pay for my rent. No one knows the story. Preston, you always do this to me. I'm always spilling my beans in front of you. He has this way of like making it safe to be all fucked up and not be embarrassed. Yes. Yes. What's up with that? <laughs> yes. okay, and then once you admit it, that's when you do the prayer. That's when you ask for the help. And that's when you find who has your back and stop with the codependency and playing the game of social. If you're lonely, how many of you in this room are too lonely? Isolation is a real thing right now. Yes. You don't have friends. You don't have people you can talk to. You're looking for community. Then start it. Mm. Then mm. find a person. Then, you know, here's the plan B. If there's no one there that has your back, go find someone you can give to. That's one of the biggest practices I've had this life. I have people in my world that give me nothing. They literally mm. never reciprocate. And instead of me complaining about it, I go, oh, that's what got me up this morning. That's... I can go help that person. So that regenerates the life force. Because the only reason I turned into a wizard or whatever he called me, a fairy, is because I demanded the authentic me and I reduced my attention to the pleaser who was playing a normal game. Normal's a setting on the dryer. Leave it there. There is no normal, said the astrologer. It's about you figuring out your nature. And some of you are really water. You're reclusive. You're quiet. You're shy. That's a superpower in the name of healing. Go mm. get Reiki. Go learn how to give Reiki. Find animals that you can serve. That's the water people. You know who you are. You love all the mystical woo stuff. You're probably watching me somewhere on astrology. Then the second category is air. Some people in this room just read the books, take all the classes, and don't do anything. They have notebooks after notebooks and classes after classes, and they have notebooks in their backpack and they have magazines they don't finish. And that's because your mind hasn't had you admit that you need help and you need it concretely. Mm -hmm. So distinguished you airhead people that you need concrete help. That's a different word. Mm -hmm. And then some of you are here in this room, you're earth, you're taking really good notes. You got all the practical, you got money, you got, you have money but you lost the money, but you love money, but you don't know how to deal with the money. Then you know what you do? You make a list, you organize, you make a plan stand. Earth people need plans. They need structure and they have to be held accountable. If you make an agreement, you're going to go on a budget, stick to it. If you know you're an earth person and you worry about money all the time, take some practical steps and do something concrete and listen to Preston. You're not in this class for no reason at all, but you got to get practical earth people, which mm -hmm. they're too practical because they're cleaning and they're organizing and they're judging and they're criticizing the shit out of themselves. And the last category is fire. And you just spend money like crazy. You guys, you get all excited. You take all the classes, you spend all the money, but you don't really have a plan stand because secretly you're just wanting to have fun, go drink, have a party and figure out who you can play with. That's not really good for money-making. It's good for energy. It's very attractive, but you can burn out mm. getting too much, getting too high, spending too much and not staying focused. So that's called water, air, earth, and fire. You want to figure out who you are. That's all I'm going to tell you, said the mm. astrologer, the wizard over here, the little fairy. I found out it was a fairy. I didn't know. You... I thought I was normal. I really did. For so many years, I, you know, I was a mom and I was married and I played house. And, I, and then one day, I don't know what the crisis was in the end, was when I got to the deepest, darkest part where I was really depressed and I was, I got real. Mm. So if you're in this room and you're in that vulnerable state, please don't mistake it. Something's wrong. Nothing's wrong. It's just your soul getting your attention the best way it knows how in your wallet, in your heart, in your psyche. Okay. Let me jump in here. Cause this is so many gems that we're just going to breathe into it. This is yep about to cry. All of it, all of it coming up. And I, I can feel the room going, Oh fuck. Okay. So Person after person has come in here and cracked this room and uh, 
Deborah, you are doing nothing short of that. Um, I want to ask you something for people here. And it's we spoke to it. We spoke to it on the other podcast that you and I did. How old were you when you first, quote unquote, really made it and like your business was flying? 58. Let that land, everybody. 58 years old. Now, this woman has a multi million dollar business right now. And it did not, quote unquote, happen how she wanted it to until 58 years young. It's true. Now, again, what you're seeing here, right? David Osborne was in here. He's 57. You're about to be 70, right, Deborah? Yep. Do you, what, are you, what are you noticing? Do you see how much energy she has? Do you see how much passion? You know, see, this, she's like 20. She's 70, but she's 20, right? It's so interesting, right? Deborah, what really worked? Like a lot worked, but what really worked to help there's you? One, there's one single ingredient that's made my success, and that's my relationship with God. Like mm -hmm. I knew that spirit had an intention and a reason for bringing me to earth. It's never left me. Mm -hmm. There's not one person on this planet that didn't sign a contract before they got here. If you can't read it, check in with an astrologer. You have to remember what you signed up for. Because mm. mm. without that clear message, which can come through words or feelings or dreams or passion, without the single focus of your commitment to serve that which created you, you're going to be confused. That, that, okay. I mean, wow. I often say the fruit doesn't belong to the tree. It belongs to the ecosystem, right? And- and what you're speaking to is exactly that, which is figuring out what fruit is yours to give, what fruit is yours to grow, what fruit is yours to bear. And uh, oftentimes people just want to show and give the fruit without the darkness that it takes, the germinating, the deepness that you must go into the earth to produce the type of apples that are juicy and, and, and glowing and all of those things. So I wanna know from you, can you, and you don't have to answer this, but you know I'm going to come for you. Um, can you talk to us about, and you did this to me on when uh, you interviewed me. You asked me, when's the last time you cried? And I wanted to lie, and I didn't. So now I'm going to ask you, when's the last time you felt really low? And what'd you do about it? That's hard. Because at this point, I have really sustained equanimity. So mm -hmm. if you wanted me to say really low, I have to go back there. Because I have really learned how to sustain my nervous system. Mm -hmm. Nothing and no one can take me out of my nervous system center. The last time I would say that really low part, which I mentioned, I have not been there, you guys. This is a practice of praying every single day. I wake up and I say, who can I serve? Mm -hmm. That's my prayer every day. Well, that takes my ego and puts it right out of the picture. And my soul comes into the front of the room. This life is, the ego was such a false advertising. I don't know who made it think that if we look cute and we made money and we got married and we had kids, and we played the game, we were all going to be happy. Bullshit. What makes us happy is when the soul goes to bed at night and says, oh, I had the best day giving. Felt so good being on Preston's talk and having people feel me. That's all. Deborah, um, there's a few things that I just want to point out, and I'm going to give you the stage to just have your final words and to go off because you're that person. Uh, but I want to acknowledge you before we do. First of all, everybody, if you aren't following at Deborah Silverman, find her. She's a Deborah, three words Deborah Silverman Astrology. Deborah Silverman Astrology. And tag her, tag me in any pictures and all that stuff. Um, a lot of people lack guidance, right? There's a lot of olders, but not many elders. And I just want to acknowledge you for your willingness to stand in that role so tall and, and so fabulously and to allow your heart to be displayed, allow your, your gorgeousness to be basked in and um you know it there 
it's very rare that you find it with somebody who's also quote unquote online, right? Because there's a whole generation of elders who are behind the scenes, but you don't get to see them. You don't, you don't get to experience them. And so I just want to say thank you on behalf of all of humanity for, for choosing not to be a dinosaur, for finding a way, hear it, let it land, you know, right? You chose to say, I'm not a fucking dinosaur. Watch me. Watch me step forward. Watch me do it how the young people do. And watch me get in my power and give them an option for what it looks like. I am so grateful for you. You, you through and through, behind the scenes, you send me weird texts every couple months or every couple of days. I love it. It's, it's so good. We do this. We just do it, right? And we send each other stuff back and forth. And you're just a good person. And I'm so happy for everyone that they get to experience you and get to know you and get to follow you. So final words, and then we're going to bring on the last person, which is my wife, Alexi. And then we're going to end this thing out. Right. You get to let, I get to have Alexi on the other side. I'm just going to say the authenticity of your expression elicits my authenticity. And that's what you're asking for everybody in this room. And what is authenticity astrologically, but being yourself, figuring out your own comfort level in your skin. And if you're not comfortable in your skin, that's why I can't answer your question. When I went low, I have learned how to be comfortable in my skin and my prayer for this room, for this planet is that every soul remembers they're willing to have anything happen to bring them home. They'll go anywhere. They'll experience anything. No matter if it hurts or it's ugly or it's death or it's diseases or it's this soul, every one of your soul, I hate to say this, it's funny. The soul is a slut. She'll do anything to experience God. She'll go anywhere no matter what the crisis was, no matter what the issue is, no matter what the politics are, no matter what your country's doing, what your money's doing, the soul, she's like, there's an opportunity to see if I can take it home, come back to where I started and recognize it. I'm in. So good. Thank you, Deborah. You are uh, best in class. Thank you. (laughs) He's like my best cheerleader. Yes. You're like my best cheerleader. I'm gonna just keep texting you because you just say the nicest things. Do it. It's true. Like and tell your wife and those little people in your house that they're so lucky to have this new energetic you're bringing to the earth, so that we're not left with the old story and you're recognizing I'm doing the same thing. Yes. Facts. Mm-hmm.